Good evening, my name is Grace Vega. I live at and I am actually going to read the words of some other people because I am so distressed to find that we have rooms like this. I don't give a shit. Um, excuse my language, sorry. I don't care if they are not plywood. That is, plywood is there, and that will burn very quickly. So it's under a piece of plastic. The fact that we put children, or allow a program to put any of our children in, in those, I'm just shocked. Um, and so I'm going to read, as I say, the words of others. Uh, this is not the sort of thing that this organization is doing that we have paid for and that I'm paying for and you're paying for because our folks aren't trained well enough to handle our children is not something that's looked at as prime way to handle things. In fact, it's a big problem throughout our country. Desperation and broken trust when schools restrain students or lock them in rooms. That's an NPR report in June of this year. And uh, so it's been discussed all over the country as a problem, not something positive. Yvonne Cantrell, who worked at Oakland Middle School in the mid-90s, says, I worked in special education class. She couldn't be here tonight because she's not well. These seclusion rooms were in the back of the trailer classroom, and I'm hearing these are all over the school system, not just in the, those buildings, but that we have them at Oakland. We have rooms for seclusion or isolation in a number of places in our school system. So let's not pretend there's two rooms in that place. They may not fulfill the exact definitions that you all are talking about, but there are places we're putting children to keep them, do something with them, but it's damaging. There were about five or six of them, she says. At the time, they were, students were labeled as having the most severe behaviors in the district, a danger to themselves and others. Wow, that, that sounds familiar. I was hired because of my background working in mental health. My heart was broken every day. I did take the job because I wanted to be the one to show the students someone cared. It was a bit of a martyr complex with good intentions. We did physical takedowns and I could feel the dignity draining from the students and me. I had to follow protocol and to be honest, there were many dangerous situations. I was physically attacked. The problem with this setup is it's breeding ground for self-fulfilling prophecy. The students act out because they can and learn. It's a method of avoidance. They believe they are not capable of learning or deserving of love. Eventually, as my confidence and my competency grew, I started implementing new techniques to avoid physical contact or isolating the students. I showed them that I had faith they could learn. I showed them compassion instead of anger and violence, and I know it changed the students and me. Also, let's be clear that 95% of the students were black males. That class prepared, this class prepared students to live in jail or institutions. It's truly a crisis. If you're, well, the next she says, if you need perspective from someone who lived the experiments, I, I'm available. This is a matter of race, my friends. And I'm sorry, I can't say a name, but our superintendent, I can refer to, I believe, is cops out. He puts up all sorts of little pieces and bits. But this is a crisis that's been going on for decades and needs to be focused on now. Thank you.